When Carmen and Alan Snedeker moved into their suburban home in Connecticut, they thought it was perfect. Little did they know what evil lurked inside the woodwork. They say their new house, which was once a funeral parlor, was haunted by ghosts. One of the children slept downstairs in the basement, which used to be the morgue. There, a gruesome blood-stained wall remained, along with a chain-powered body lift, once used to bring corpses from the basement to the first floor. Night after night, the family says they heard strange voices, loud music and haunting footsteps in the house, yet no one was there. Then the most chilling thing happened to Carmen while she slept next to her husband. She says she was raped and sodomized by a grotesque demon who jumped on her in bed. The Snedekers tried to get help from their neighbors and even the police, but no one seemed to listen. Finally, in a desperate cry for help, they found real-life Ghostbusters who advised them to move out immediately. The Snedekers say they've never been back since. You're probably saying to yourself about now, well, this story sounds crazy. But my guest today insists it's true. Meet Al and Carmen Snedeker. They are here with their son, Michael, and their niece, Kelly. Later in the show, we'll talk with neighbors, including one who now lives in the very same house the Snedekers claim is haunted. He says that Al and Carmen are making up the story. Mm. Carmen, we're going to start with you. You moved into this house in the first place because your son, Stephen, was in the middle of receiving treatments for cancer at a local hospital. And the house you moved into was a former funeral parlor. Can you take us through the layout of the house? Yes, as you came in the front door, there was a beautiful wood entrance with an excellent hall stairway that went up to the second apartment. That's the apartment I saw first before I moved in. I didn't know it was a funeral home. When I came in the first time, the downstairs was full of workmen and woodworking things of lumber and hammering things going on. So I saw the upstairs apartment. I didn't realize it was a funeral home. As you go through the hallway to your left was what used to be the chapel, was our dining room. In the back of it was the kitchen. There was a back door. As you walked out the back door, there were French doors. If you'd go in those French doors, it led down into the basement or into our bedroom. When you went into the basement, there was the morgue and where they prepared the bodies. The hoist went up into our bedroom above us. There was a blood tank to the right of the staircase. And then as you walked through there, there was the sink where they flushed the, the blood and things of that nature and they prepared the bodies and there was makeup and wax and things like that in there. There were three coffin pillows. Then as you come through, there was a tool room where they kept the little head things, where they put the name of the person, little metal plaques. You went on through, that was the North Coffin Room. That's where my son Stephen slept. That was his bedroom. You made a right, you went into the South Coffin Room. That's where Michael slept. As you go up the stairs, you go directly into the bathroom. Back around, there's a U-shape into a beautiful living room with a sunroom, I, there were over 22 windows. Then there were two more bedrooms. Kelly and my daughter and other niece slept in the other one. Herman, although your children told you they heard strange sounds and noises and they saw ghosts, you didn't believe them at first? No, or... I didn't believe them. I didn't believe in ghosts. I thought that they were things of imagination. I'd always been taught that. Uh, my oldest boy, Stephen, came to me the day we moved into the house and he said, we have to leave here immediately. The house is evil. It's really evil. Something bad's going to happen if we stay. I told them that houses could not be evil because I didn't believe they could. What changed your mind? My mind was changed uh, uh, over a year later when Kelly and Trish moved in with us. One night after a date, Kelly came into the house. Kelly's your niece? Yes, Kelly is right beside me. Uh, she came in from a date and she tried to go into her bed and something started happening to her and she came to our bedroom where I was sleeping and she said, Aunt Carmen, Aunt Carmen, come flick. It's coming. It's coming again. It's happening again. I grabbed my Bible from the nightstand and I'm saying to myself, I've got to find something to put all of these ghost stories to rest. I've had it up to here with ghost stories. I didn't believe in them. I'd never seen anything and I thought it was all because it was a former funeral home. Now, Kelly, you're the niece, you came to live with your aunt, yeah. and you say you were molested by an entity. Tell me about that. 
Well, it all started when I, um... I can't. When she came home from a date. Yeah. It's okay. Take Kelly came in, in from a date, and she went into her bedroom, and she tried to lay in bed, and she felt something come up underneath the covers towards her, and it was pulling at her undergarments and touching her in her private areas. She reached over for her rosary, and the cross came off. <coughs> That's when she got up and ran into the room with me. A few other things happened to her. I'll let her tell you about them if she can. Um, the covers would be pulling off the bed. There would be uh, voices, a lot of scratching on the walls. The, the bed didn't always do it. It did it more in Aunt Carm's room than anywhere, but it would, like, breathe, kind of like. Kelly, what did the apparition operation look like? Did it? Uh, it did you didn't see a full have a person? Form. It was just a black mass. Just a black mass. Yeah. Was there a hand? You said you felt. Um, something. I felt it. You couldn't see it. I couldn't see it because it was behind me. But it was like a huge. It was just freezing cold. It was like a hand on my back, and it would just like when I, I was laying on my this side, and this bra strap would always be pulled down. And I always slept in my underclip, you know, my bra and stuff when I went to bed. That's just, mm -hmm. And it would be being tugged down. And you'd pull it back up. And it usually, you know, when you're laying on that side, that just doesn't happen. And I got up to get the rosary. And I laid back down in the bed. And when I did that, my hand, I was holding the rosary in my hand. And it was like something was, you know, trying to open my hand up. And it would... It would start pulling on my covers, pulling them to the floor. And then after that happened, I, I got up and ran into Aunt Carm's room. And she got up to come in with me. She brought her Bible. This had happened before, something similar. And she didn't believe me. She'd just bring the Bible in. And she would sit down, and she would start telling me the Hail Mary, out the rosaries, and reading the Bible, and trying to calm me, and talk to me, and tell me I was just having nightmares or something. I truly didn't believe her. I thought that the older boy had gotten her all excited about the stories of the funeral home and the ghost he had seen. When I went into her bedroom, I sat with her and I was opening it and reading from the Bible. And she wrapped around me. She was so excited. Can you feel it coming? Can you feel it coming, Aunt Carmen? It's coming. And I, I pushed her back. And the third time she did that and I pushed her back, I saw an arm, the knuckles, the joints, and the wrist go up under her long nightshirt, up over her breast, and back through the wall. At that point, I realized something was going on. I grabbed her, ran into what used to be the chapel to use the phone, and there's where I called. All right, Al, you say strange things were happening to you and Carmen at night when you were in bed. In order to fully understand, we want you to show us what happened. We have a bed here today that okay. is about the size of the bed, which was in the house. So we're going to set the scene. Now, you're about ready to tuck in for the night when all of a sudden you hear music like this. What happened next? Well, Sally, the music would wake me up at night. I'd be sound asleep. I would, I would hear the music playing, and I would say to myself, what is that? And, and I would lie there for five or ten minutes and listen to it. Along with the music, I could hear uh, three or four voices. There were uh, older men uh, chatting back and forth, back and forth. What did you initially think the music was? It was sounded like... Oh, 30s music from a, an old uh, Victrola player. Uh, he thought someone was in the house when all of this was going on, and he... I, I started, I, I used to get up every night, go down the stairs. I, first couple times, I would just go down and start looking, but each time I went down, I started getting more and more nervous and, and, and afraid for some reason. I started bringing a, uh, a baseball bat with me. I started going through the boys' room through the, uh, uh, the, uh, the coffin room area where the chain uh, body now, lift was. No one is playing the radio, and the oh, boys are asleep, and they're the, in their Everybody bed. would be sound asleep. It got to the point where I, was, I, I got so afraid when I was going down there, I started bringing a gun with me. And one night, I woke Carmen up. I said, Carmen, I said, uh, I got to stop doing this. I'm afraid I'm going to shoot one of our children. Wow. He was really afraid that one of the kids would be standing up in the room when he'd go around the corner. And he would fire because he was so frightened sure. himself. And he'd come back up and to get into bed. Now, when we used to get into bed, it only happened to us not Separately. at the same... Yeah, we Separately. were never not awake at the, same, at the time. same time. But the bed would begin to vibrate. 
and it would be a, a gentle vibration at first, and it got worse and worse. There were other things that happened. The bed, is, as Kelly said, had a pulse and a heartbeat. Like a heartbeat, yeah. And when, when you were in your bed, it would come and lift the covers and tug at them. But there was a pulse up. and a heartbeat in the bed. In the bed, and, and you could feel it. Someone else could go up and touch it and feel it. People that had not lived in the house. And we had this thing that would walk around the bed. It had really small feet, like a cat. We didn't have a cat. It would walk around the bed, and if it sat down, it would be as an adult male sitting, the impression of the bed. The feet were light, but the weight of what the happened The feet were the about the size of this, a cat's feet. Al, you said something else happened to you that is very difficult to talk about even today. Can you, you share it with us? Yes. Uh, one night, we were, we were lying in bed. Carmen had uh, already had fallen asleep. Um, I felt this strange sensation coming over my body. It started at my feet and, 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 and started climbing up through my body. Before I had a chance to reach over to Carmen to tell her something was wrong, I was froze. I couldn't move. And then I felt this stinging uh, penetration in, in my uh, anal area. And I, I was trying to scream, to cry out to Carmen to, to help me somehow. And uh, I couldn't move. Um, after, after a while, I don't know how long, uh, it, it had gone away. Uh, there was no more sensation. Uh, I woke Carmen up and I said, Carmen, I, I think I was just sodomized by this demon. This happened to me as well, Sally. It was a, te a, a tedious kind of pain that happened. It was horrible pain. It was so penetrating and so much pain. There was no pleasure in this. And when it would take me, sexually assault me, it would laugh it with such pleasure. <laughs> it enjoyed what it was doing to me. And I was so terrified. I couldn't move. I could, it was the most crippling thing I've ever been through in my life, and I wouldn't wish it on anyone. Now, Michael, you actually saw ghosts? What did they look like to you? Um, it took different forms. When I seen it, I would see it in different shapes. The first time I seen the ghost, it appeared in cat-like eyes glowing up on the ceiling, looking down at my bed. And the second time I seen it, it appeared as my little sister the lights were taken out, taken out of the, out of the sockets on the ceiling. And I looked over, because they were flashing on and off, and there was no bulbs in there. And I looked over, and it was, looked like my sister, and she was laughing at it when she was flicking off the switch like that. And then I got up to go over to her, and she went running up the stairs. And I went into the living room with where my mom and cousin were, and I asked them, if Jenny just came running through and they said, no, she's been in bed all night. And I said, five minutes ago, she was down in my room turning on and off the lights. Yeah. And you knew that that wasn't so. Did no. it have a voice, any kind of a strange? It had several voices. Sometimes it would take on the voice of one of the children to come into the room. It would say, mommy, mommy, and it would be the sweet voice of your child. And you turn and there would be this dark presence of, of a smoke figure just standing there laughing at you. And then other times it had the deep, raspy voice where it would insult and, and shout profane things and insult you. It was horrible. When we come back, we're going to hear more about this bizarre story, and we'll hear just how desperate the Snedekers were trying to get rid of the evil spirits. They called the neighbors, they called the police, and no one was willing to help. But they did find a solution, and we'll find out what it was when we return. Carmen says four years ago she moved into a house that was formerly a funeral parlor and Carmen says it was haunted and terrible things happened to her and her family. Carmen, I have to ask you, why did you just pick up your family and leave? Sally, that would have been the first choice we would have had, but every time we did leave the house it would follow us. I'd go to work and the computer system would go down or the phone system would go down. The people at work are the ones that gave me the phone number to the people that finally helped me. My husband went to work. His car, he, star he parked and went inside the building. As he did, the car started back up and drove into the building. 
We didn't want our family members harmed by whatever was harming us. It was bad enough. Carmen, I'd like to ask you, is how many children do you have, and were I they have, all affected? We have four children and two nieces, and everyone was affected, along with and some And where friends. are the other children now? They're young. There's a 12-year-old and a 9-year-old that I want to protect, and the oldest one's in school in Massachusetts. And they were kind of scared or nervous to be on yeah. Oh, terrified. One of them was uh, given drugs or taken to a psychiatric hospital? Yes, that was the oldest boy. I didn't believe that anything he was telling me was true. I asked his oncologist who uh, had been treating him if that could be a side effect from the cancer treatments he was receiving. They said no, so I took him to a psychologist. Um, was there any medical evidence that either of you had been raped? Did you go to a doctor and get physically no. examined? Why would we? I mean, we couldn't see it. How did we expect anyone else to believe us? But you felt a stinging pain? Yeah, at, yeah it, w it wasn't like a, a normal rape, not a person-to-person -person type. Uh, Carmen, there was one point where you say you actually were possessed by a demonic force. And you, Al, say you witnessed it. Can you tell us about it? This was one of the most terrifying events that happened in the house. I've drawn some sketches, if I may. We had been outside just kidding around. The researchers were in the house, my husband, my niece. And upon being, going back to bed, I sat down and I was no longer in my room. I was in a dark room. I don't know if you can catch this on camera. I was in complete darkness. I couldn't feel the temperature of my skin. I couldn't hear myself speak. I couldn't see anything but blackness. I knew I was no longer in my room. The entity opened up a hole, and he started shouting obscenities at, at me. And when I began to pray the Our Father, he got worse. And he said, there's no way you could possibly believe what you've been taught as a child. I went into this place. It was called Ithram, a desert road of hot tears. And I was taken down this road. These represent souls, lost souls. I could actually feel the emotion, the anger, the hurt, the desperation, the sadness. There were no positive emotions. They were all human negative emotions. And they were palatable. They just went through my skin. I knew it. I felt such compassion for these souls. But I couldn't leave the road. I was warned against it. I was there for eight hours. Has there ever been any research or anything saying, you know, trying to find out who exactly these spirits were? Yes. Yes. We had some researchers come in uh, on the night that I discovered that there were other entities in the house. I called some people called the Warrens. Uh, someone at work had told me that she believed the things my children were telling me was true, and she asked me to go to uh, Ed and Lorraine's museum with her. She gave me their number to call and, and make an appointment. I never did. I just kept the number in my wallet. That night, I called it. And did they help you? They stayed with us for nine weeks. Nine weeks? Nine weeks, every night. Mm -hmm. Every night. And, and there was also somebody else who went in and documented all this? The re they're researchers. They had three researchers that came in the house and stayed nine and a half weeks. They worked during the day. They did not accept any pay for what they did for us. And they experienced phenomena from the very first night they walked into our house. Some, so you know definitely that it is a male spirit? No. They, there is no gender in the spirit's world. There is... Uh, these were called incubus and, and succubus, succubus, but I'll let the researchers tell you more about that later on. Later, we're going to meet the Ghostbusters who helped Carmen and her family, but next, the neighbors we found while investigating this case who say, gee, they don't believe a word of the Snedeker story. Don't go away. that um, you were molested. Now, were you ever molested outside of your home? Did they follow you? Like you said, that they, they would follow you if you would leave. One night, I ran down the street with Kelly uh, being sodomized the whole way. Ooh. Yes, you had a question. Hi, I was wondering what the police thought when you told them that. The policeman almost shot my bedroom d door <laughs> when the door began to open by itself when he was in there. And uh, your question? Well, I'd just like to know, if they were molested in their beds, why didn't you just leave that next right. morning? 
You have children to worry about. Exactly. Anyway. Not just a matter of that. Around that. What about the fact that everywhere we went, it, followed, it us. followed us, and the other outsiders, should we drag in our parents, our grandparents, our nieces and nephews? It, uh, we had larger families. Take a chance families. that that would happen to them. Around this time of year, we do hear a lot of tall tales about ghosts, goblins, things that go bump in the night. So far today, we've heard some pretty horrifying ghost stories that our guests claim are no tall tales. They're true. Carmen says as soon as she and her family moved into their new house, which used to be a funeral parlor, strange things began to happen. So far, we've heard about the music in the middle of the night, the voices out of nowhere, and some pretty serious <coughs> accusations, including rape and sodomy by an evil spirit, whatever it is. While we were investigating this story, we came across some people who live in the Snedeker's old neighborhood. And they say they have some serious doubts about the Snedeker's story. In fact, they say the Snedeker's are making the whole thing up. Meet Richard, Yvonne, and Jim. Richard, why don't you believe the Snedeker story? Well, I think the most obvious reason for me was the inconsistencies in it. We were moving into the Southington area from another town, found the apartment. We liked the apartment. I mentioned it to some co-workers who work in that town and live in that town. And, of course, the whole haunted house story came out with them. Now, you moved into their apartment after they left? Correct. The same one they were living in. Oh, okay. When all this was supposedly happening. I think I researched it with my wife. We talked to people. As a matter of fact, a close relative of yours told me that there was nothing to it, that you were making it up just for the money. Could now, you I, tell me which relative you spoke to? Because I have very few relatives in the area. And I had a relative of mine contact me saying that people that were living in there wanted an exorcism. Wanted us to come there. When was this? This was a year ago. I was living now, there. Now, let me ask right. you, let me ago. ask you on the dining room floor, do you see two, uh, five toes and a heel and an imprint of, in red? Because it was there and on did the not leave? Floor. Yes. Well, no. Is it hardwood? It's hardwood floor. There is no impression. There was I've been when to I left. every part of the house. There have been Is the no, body lift still there? The body lift is out now. It was there It was there when I moved there is, in. It did nothing. I've had, I have small children myself, as a matter of fact. I have a 7-year-old, a 6-year-old, and I, see, I have seen nothing that... Richard, that I thing. really don't want any harm you know, to come to you, but we did have an very long. My question. I've been there three I don't think years. I'm lucky, though. My question, my, my, my response to this is, if the ghost followed you down the street, you were so concerned that the ghost was going to harm your relatives, your friends, then the house wasn't haunted. The ghosts were from you. It was you. after you. That's right. Because Don't I have had nothing. House. I have not heard a creaking board. Right. I have not heard anything right. that would suggest that that house is haunted whatsoever. Let me, let me talk to you, Sally, can I just say one thing? Three, obviously, yeah. obviously, the exorcism worked then. You're very lucky. There was I, no exorcism. exorcism. I don't think there was an exorcism. I can't right, so so dig down this 12 week. inches behind every corner of the house. 12 inches, there is an exorcism medal. And there are also other things that you can find there. There is all kinds in the tool exorcism. room. A I cannot Catholic give you that. Oh, I talk no to Catholic Father Kamal. priest within like a hundred miles of this place no, has ever set foot in your house exorcism. since the last funeral was performed by the previous you owners. Know, you know, people say you didn't know that it was a funeral home. The picture that was supplied by whoever that was taken last year, the sign that says funeral home is still on the front of the house. If they showed the picture, up, she was showed the top up. apartment. Cover up they were by signs on the front door. They, they got pictures. The bottom floor. They got pictures yeah. of you in the newspaper, which right. they also showed. Right, right next to you, right, right behind you. It's right there. If you look right yes. behind you. It's picture, covered it's up with plywood. It's covered up. It's covered it's covered up. up. It was not covered up. It was not covered up. You did not live there with high gear. I do not know. I have been there three years, lady. I have other witnesses that did say you know I'm covered. That's where our money was. Nothing yes. was ever said right. until you got behind in your rent, and that's when it Hold started. On. No, you know what happened? No, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. You got behind in your no. rent. Yeah. Oh, you guys no. are both. I have an attorney that will dispute that. Yvonne, the landlord, you sent a check. Oh, my never question. got there. You could never come Okay, my question was around the same um, oh, kind of thing. Right. It sounds like a little bit dramatized by the wife. Um, the whole idea of the ghost and the spirits and everything it sounds somewhat dramatic. I've heard people talk about ghosts and spirits, and I'm not saying that that can't happen, but it just sounds very, very it dramatic didn't here. the way that you're explaining it. Um, the other thing is, is I was wondering if you, one, if you have a book out, 
and two, <laughs> if you were either behind in your mortgage why we're here. or your rent. Because yes. that could be cause for the dramatization. No. No, or the no that's not true. No, we were not, not behind true. in our rent. Yvonne, you were saying it was for says. money. Why? Yes, that's what it is. Even the landlord said they got behind. The, they ne she, he never had a problem until they got behind in the rent. And then the all of a the sudden... The landlord knew there was a problem with that house. No, the landlord yes. didn't know. Yes. Yes. Wait a minute. People. If the landlord said no. there was a problem in the house... Ask there was his a, daughter. There was a lady Correct. living upstairs Sally. in the house. The Wait whole time this was going on, there was an apartment upstairs. This lady got disgusted. She got moved out because she was disgusted with all the publicity that was she going on. What she said, Tammy. She experienced. She, she comes to me and nothing. talks to me. Yes, yes she, did. she did. You she were not there. You I was, told I've been us. in that place. I was she told was us there, and the researchers. Yes. And she allowed I, the priest to. So why did she tell the Wait TV minute. people that nothing happened? Why did she tell us that nothing happened? Because why did she, she tell the newspaper? Because she, she told her. me she had a reputation to this friend. When I took this rent, I work at Food Mart, and Father Kabbalah, who's been a, pr a priest in the Immaculate Conception Church in Southington, in Southington, he's the, he's the for one that 25 told us forget years, about it. 25 years, yeah. and I told he was a pr friend of mine, and I said I'm moving in the Hallahan House. He said, Yvonne, there was never anything there. That's baloney. And I said, well, if there is, we they're going to have to learn him. to live to, with we me. We went to him, and, he and said, we talked to him. My he money's said there was on you, there. Yvonne. Those were his exact yeah. words. Uh, sure. I'm There's one a lot of the money neighbors, in Southington, that's why. and uh, I don't believe in ghosts until some of this occurred. When I came home from work one night, I visited my neighbor next door. Her name was Joan. And I was very set back with the fact that all of a sudden her kids had crucifixes on. And she had crucifixes all over her house. And I asked her what the problem was, and she was extremely upset. At this time, she didn't want to tell me, and she was... Finally, I pried it from her. She had said to me that she had been in um, the Snedeker house. She, while she was there, she had been in the cellar. When the cellar, she had this very strong, pungent odor that made her very, very sick. She said she felt like throwing up and had to get out of there. Another time, on another occasion, she was sitting talking to Carmen. I believe it was in her dining room. I'm not 100% sure. Yes, it was the yes, dining room of the kitchen. And she says, while she was sitting talking to her, she felt something bite her or sting her on her backside or the thigh of her leg. And it was extremely painful. When she looked down, there was absolutely nothing there. So you believe the Snedeker story because your friend believes it? Well, I'll tell you, I was uncomfortable with things I saw. I did hear that one of the priests from one of the churches did go in there, and he did not believe what had gone in. But I did see other priests go in and out of there. I will be honest to say what I did see. And uh, I did not experience anything other than that. But your friend did. Yes. Yes. Uh, I'm also a neighbor. And Joan and her husband were to our next door neighbor's house for a pool party when we were there. And when Joan went into the house to tend her babies, her husband said that there had been some funny things going on and that he was concerned for his wife. Well, this was in July. We had been hearing odd noises about 3 o'clock in the morning. So I decided to put a journal next to the bed and write down what went on during the night. So you're a neighbor who everything you s that happened at night, you would document. Right. And I discovered yeah, that there were usually things going on in the neighborhood that explained the things they put in the newspaper. Such as? Oh, when the chains would rattle, one time at 3 o'clock in the morning, a car, in fact, there were three cars this particular night, the noise woke us up. And they would hide in the shadows of a tree down the street, and then they would come driving by. But if anything else came by, they would take off very fast, like they didn't want to be seen. One of the trucks had a bad muffler, and it really rattled our house as well as anybody else around. There were chains dragged. So you're saying that when heavier trucks, trucks went down the road, around that time some repairs had been done in the road and heavy trucks would come down and when they'd hit this repair in the road, it would rattle no, all the houses that, around that's us. Not Excuse it. That's me, baloney. I don't mean to be dis that's disrespectful. How can a I car like this make that woman. kind of vibration? But what we experienced was not a traffic problem. It was in the house. The it floor was, in the house. was not house clutter. <laughs> what about the covers coming off? What about the sodomization? What about, what about the apparitions the my children the saw? Point, though, the, Sally, the whole point with this is, I have a seven and a six-year-old home. They have four kids or five kids that were in the house. If 
the board creaked in the house, I'd have my kids out of there that night. I, would be I don't out care too, if I yeah. had to sleep you know, right. on the street or in the car, in a local motel. You're going to tell me that you experienced all this and, and you kept your kids there for around. two years? Oh, we didn't. That's ridiculous. Financially, I'm not financially well off, but I sleep on the street. That's the reason they named in the newspaper as having come in and blessed the house and worked with them did not go into that house. I'm sorry? He had not been in that house since Mrs. Hallahan's funeral. Who? Priest. Mrs. Mrs. Hallahan is a lady. When I'm that sorry. article was uh, in the newspaper, name is Mrs. Hallahan. Mrs. Hallahan. Will you for call the Archdiocese and you'll house. find out? You should have cleaned your binoculars. There is the sign that says Hallahan Funeral Home. This is a dated newspaper picture. <laughs> Ma'am, I hate to tell you, but it was on covered up with a light over. by plywood when I lived in that house and That's when right. I looked at there. it. Not correct. when you got yes, there. It was not covered up until after it all started. It no, was wrong. not. That's wrong. Next, thing, we're going to meet the uh, real-life Ghostbusters who Al and Carmen say saved their lives when along with a priest they performed an exorcism in their house. See if we can figure out who the priest was. Take a break. Carmen and their family about a chilling story. They wrote a book about it called In a Dark Place, the story of a true haunting. And they wrote this book along with Ed and Lorraine Warren, who have been with us before. They are the professional ghostbusters, who Al and Carmen said saved their lives. Ed, you both launched an investigation into the house and you discovered a very shocking thing that actually happened in the funeral parlor involving the bodies. What happened? Well, we feel through our investigation that necrophilia or abuse of corpses had occurred in that home. Not necessarily by the undertaker, it could be anybody that went in there. Now this case is not as isolated as these three people would have us think. We have over 70 cases very similar to the Snedekers. And remember that the church was involved in this. Who was the priest? Everyone seems okay. to have a disagreement. Okay, we can tell you that the chancellery was involved. The priest that was involved, there was a Father A who was on 2020. And there was also three other priests, and this can be borne out through the official records of the Chancellery in Hartford. Yes. How about a name? Just one name. Father A is the name I give you. I don't have give to give a name. Give a name, a full Why name. I give you I can a prove. name. These are secret things. We it's, are Catholic, it's and we secret. Respect. You're sitting here talking about being raped and sodomized by some sort of entity, right. but you won't give a name. Up. It was I'm all backed up. I'm telling you what happened to me. All I'm not telling you. You've got to believe me. We had investigators. I'm telling you what happened. Were you in the house? No. I was standing. I lived across the you know? street before you. Were you in the house? Still lived there. One of the ones that came around the house, go boo boo through the window. No. Once you guys started doing this, and it got to the paper. Sounds like so. Oh, oh, very likely. You're probably one of the guys I chased like, down the street. I'd like to know how much you Why would I run all the way down the street? Especially you the street. are getting paid off by the landlord to do this kind of stuff. Because you, you know, know as well money as we are you do, making today? you know as well as we do that yeah. what, oh, what sure. went on in that house actually occurred. We have the proof. We have people out here, investigators, who went through the there. same thing oh, as the Snedekers. Ed? <clears throat> I don't know what really went, what happened in the house and what didn't, but I lived next to the house for over 25 years, and I haven't been in there in over 15 years, but I do know that when they moved into the house, there was no sign that said Hallahan Funeral Home. It, Thank The you. sign exists. It is, there. you know, to the right side of the door, but it was covered with plywood for years now. It's been covered up ever since the Hallahans moved out. It does not say... Hallahan's funeral home on it anymore and people moved into the home after the Snedekers left and left very quickly after they did before they moved in. Okay, so, so there was an interim family that you oh, yeah. think was disturbed too. So Jeff, like, what do you think? Yeah, I have a question. Um, Jeff's another neighbor. As you know, well, as you said before, your son was cancer, had cancer and he was taking many drugs. Yes. Did he or did he not tell you that he was also taking other illegal substances? I'm aware that he did take other illegal because substances. He used to come over to our house and tell us that whatever we wanted, we could get and whatnot. He also I don't know what he told you, and I'm not aware of his, his teenage boyhoods, but I did take him to a psychologist, remember, That's and right. I did have a great deal of interest in what happened to my son, and he has grown up a great deal, and he told the psychologist, and to this day will still tell you, there were ghosts in the house. But how I you think not? that these are all very contributing factors to why the phenomena was as intense as it was 
in that particular home. Maybe but realize the, the that ghost didn't like the use of drugs. Is that what you're saying? No. no. <laughs> drugs, drugs heighten the sensitivity. We know that when a person takes drugs, they're almost in the same state as a clairvoyant. But if you ask the gentleman who's sitting right over there, who spent nine weeks in the house, what he had also had happened to him, similar attacks. Where's as the Al gentleman? Right. right there. Yes. What happened to you? We were there for nine and a half weeks trying to help Carmen and Snedeker. When we go in on these cases, we have to document. Who's them. we? The researchers. I work with Ed and Lorraine doing their investigating. I'm one of the persons that was in there for the nine and a half weeks. I'm amazed at hearing all these people that weren't even in the home. You weren't there. You weren't witness to it. Okay. A neighbor sitting here with a book, a whole journal, stating on what took place in this case. She documented things around the clock. Why don't you come over and see if you could help the family? Why don't you see if you could offer some help? You're saying there was no priest there. I know there was priests there. The Roman Catholic Church was involved with this. Now you want us to turn around <clears throat> and give you the name of the priest. He prefers to stay anonymous. They said was no, there. No, 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 he you said don't. he was no, you not don't. there. I said I have the newspaper, the newspaper. clipping with his name I've in it. I've never publicized And he one said time. that he was no, not there. But can I see it? Published. They also published that they were not writing a book and were not going to we write a book. We worked at the time, lady. We well, were approached sure two years we, later. We insisted that it would be good for them to write a book because people like these out here would know that there is help for them if this ever occurred to them. So and you know, I have to be this journal know, around the well clock, I but I have well, I made a journal too, too, but I didn't bring it the with vehicles, me. And it's when on a kids computer were desk. pestering you, yelling in your windows. We called the police. The poolers called the police. Other neighbors called the police. I know. I, and we I have respect kids for that. Messing around the house. Yes, and I appreciate that. I but have so great you know respect what we went for you. Carmen, we let did. me ask. Let me ask this woman. Let me get this woman's opinion. Um, I'd like to know um, why you think that they would fabricate something so absurd yeah. to get money when there's other ways of getting money. And I also don't think it's right that you demean their son for doing drugs, I and mean, there are a lot of kids who have problems, and it doesn't happen just in people's houses who supposedly right. have drugs. Great okay, answer. The point I was trying to make was that some of the drugs he was taking would allow him to see things. Hallucinogenic? Exactly. LSD. Um, but supposedly it was not only one son who saw it, it was the whole family. Oh, that's right. Just because one son is doing drugs does not mean the whole family is going to be affected by it and see it. <clears throat> what about my three? Okay, neighbors. Sally. Do you want to answer? Go ahead. I was just going to, he said what I was going to say. You know, you take a lot of drugs, you start to see funny things. The whole family was on drugs? My three year old hey, come son. Come on. Philip was not there the whole time. He wasn't there. He was put into. Do you know, do you know that the priests the who went into that house had experiences so bad? in their own rectories that they wouldn't even go back into that house again. Sally, right. you're not give us, you're not give us a name. Let me okay, take, let's, let, let's get Why to Lorraine. We'll take a break and we'll be right back. Who you are and you are. Who is a skeptic on this whole matter? Joe, you say the investigations the Warrens conducted is baloney. Why? Well, I've investigated haunted houses for some 20 years and a professional psychologist pardon is there such a thing I've not met a house that I thought was haunted uh, I think the Warrens have never met a house that they didn't think was haunted <laughs> I think that you are um, mistaken the yes. um, I was you know it's my turn you made a statement I've heard that you were you loud mouth statement. you shouted people down just give me my chance no, to talk you, you did that to uh, me last uh, show we were a bunch on. of lies Joe we I'll give you your chance you're a loud mouth Warren and we all know we all know it but if you'll just let me finish when you're concerned I'm a loud mouth Go ahead, Joe. Try to, show, try to show a little Joe, class. I don't have a lot TV. of time. No, I'm not going to give class to somebody Ed, who's sitting here. Let you'll Joe, have nothing but Ed, lying. Ed, let Joe just explain. Be careful who you call a liar. Well, what would Go you ahead. do about it? <laughs> huh. Guys, Joe, point by point. Yes, one thing that the houses that sincere people report that they think are haunted usually follow certain patterns. This is a hodgepodge of the sort of ghost tale, poltergeist, part demon, part this, there? part that. 
Were you there? We saw a similar pattern with the Amityville Horror, a case that the Warrens thought was genuine. We didn't think it turned we out. It turned out to be a blatant Nobody hoax. Nobody ever proved that. Concocted over bo several bottles of wine. Can the you evidence. Prove it? Yes, I no, can you prove can't. it. Yes, you I can. Prove it's it. been proven. No, it has never. The been evidence proven. is very clear in the case of the Amityville Horror. No, the whole no packaging way. of this story. Uh, the packaging. book says it's for Halloween release. The book was written by a, a professional fiction writer who writes horror stories. Joe, uh, this does whole the church, packaging is a crock. The, Joe, does the church admit to exorcism? He's an according atheist. How to, would he know? According to a newspaper article that I have, the yeah. Bridgeport newspaper, the diocese refuses to confirm that they had any exorcism there. It wasn't if there done was, by the Sally, If there was I an exorcism, I don't exorcism understand why there is any, any reason why they can't come out and say so. We've had priests on the, the show the when we've Doctor, talked about exorcism. If I can prove that there was an exorcism. But the sheer fact that these, this family, in their hearts and in their minds, believe that this happened has to be overwhelming. And my heart goes out to you, whether it happened or not. Thank, Thank, you. You, Thank you very much. Yes. Well, I really feel like the only thing missing from your description of your first trip into the house is a corpse. I mean, blood on the walls and wax and makeup. And you also sound like you're reading a script. I'm not saying spirits and ghosts don't exist, but you sound so rehearsed. Oh, I'm sorry, Next. but do you feel that way? Yeah, I was wondering, you've been talking about two uh, different kinds of ghosts coming in. Are they either male or female, or is it always a male that's in your home? No, ghosts uh, have so. no gender, I don't think. I'm not <laughs> sure, but I don't believe they have well. a gender. Hmm. <clears throat> yes. I would like to know if you brought the, this house by a real estate agent, and if this real estate agent ever told you anything... It was rented, and no, they did not tell us anything. Question. Yes, I'd like to know if y'all still being haunted by these ghosts. No, no we're, not. we're not. The exorcism apparently worked. So our audience does not believe. Thanks to my guests and whatever you believe about the story, the book is worth picking up. It's called In a Dark Place, The Story of a True Haunting. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Some members of our audience will receive and a promotional fee has been provided by...